really hope you like this video. Please comment, like, and subscribe to get more content like this. Hi, uh, welcome to the Need to Know Comedy Show. Uh, uh, how are you doing, uh, Maureen O'Connell? How's things? Hey, how's it going? Uh, very good. Thank you for having me on. This is awesome. Oh, no, absolutely. I've just uh, uh, just watched your uh, feature film, and uh, uh, it's really brilliant. It's amazing. So, oh. so uh, how, how did that come about? Oh, thanks a million. Um, well, so I was I was in England at at the time, and I rang up a friend of mine, Carl Argue. He's the co-writer on it. And I just said, oh, just, I kind of fed up. I just want to make a feature We should, because I made shorts and stuff already. So I said, like, we should, we should do it. We should write something. So mm. I came up with the general idea of it. And then he started writing away. Then I came home. I literally wrote the other half. It's almost exactly half and half between the pair of us. Mm. And uh, I was always going to direct it anyway. And then it was meant to be both of us acting in it, but then Carl wasn't able to because it was like a no budget feature film. So mm. he he needed money at the time. So I was like, oh, God, no worries. And he didn't mind that we went ahead and um, we cast Stephen Neeson then um, in uh, the, the role of Stoney, which is the other lead. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and then, yeah. I, then I just started. We shot over a whole year kind of oh, thing. Oh, really? So, you, you, yeah, yeah, you just did it bit by bit when you could. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So just kind of not to annoy everyone because no one was getting paid, like we know money or anything. And like three DOPs. So I, uh, it was just when they were able to. So if one wasn't free, then I get another guy to shoot it kind of thing. And it, it just made it easy because it was kind of bite-sized then. People enjoyed themselves. We'd shoot a scene. We'd have three or four hours to shoot it. Yeah. And then um, everyone would go home in a good mood, feed them well, that type of thing. <laughs> And they enjoyed themselves and then they, they wouldn't mind coming back maybe in two weeks time to shoot more. Right. Yeah. Wow. It really works. Uh, uh, so you basically no budget at all. You're, you didn't get funding from anybody. No, no, no. I didn't even apply because I'm so used to getting notes. So I just I just did it myself. Um, play. Yeah. And do you have uh, input into the technical side of it? Uh, cameras, that kind of thing. Is that something that you have knowledge of as well? Like what camera to use, you know, that kind of, what lenses, that kind of thing? Yeah, uh, I mean, I'd have a basic knowledge. I went to Bally Farm at film school. And um, so, uh, yeah, like, I mean, I've, I've DOP'd some things, but um, I mean, I'd have only a basic knowledge. I'd be more a director, but I just kind of say to them, like we shoot on, we shot on Black Magic, and two of them had Black Magics. And then for the third one, mm. I needed to find a camera that kind of matched the Black Magic you know, uh, color wise. So we got a, a GH4, got a DOP with a GH4. So that type of thing I kind of know, like, you know, and then um, lenses, I kind of know, I'd suggest lenses and stuff. Or if I wasn't sure, I'd kind of go, I know that this is a different shot from what we're doing. Nor I know that we're going to need a, a certain type of lens. Mm -hmm. uh, what lens would you recommend? And they'd be able to translate my ideas into. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about you. You grew up in uh, Wicklow. Um, I yeah. saw that you uh, would make little films when you were like a kid, like using VHS camera, yeah? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I shot like fairy tales. They were easy because like you wouldn't have a script, so people would know the general story. Um, but like they're hilarious. Like, you know, I didn't mean to, I took them deadly seriously and <laughs> it was ridiculous. <laughs> and then I also made, um, I also made Psycho. I'd never seen Psycho, but I basically made Psycho when yeah. I was like nine or 10. And it's the funniest film. It's just, I, I had a jewelry box, you know, and it played that kind of tinkly kind of ballerina music. And I used that to kind of be scary and stuff. And it wasn't scary. And, <laughs> and then I had a friend who, um, she, uh, she, she had to die in it. And we, and we, she was stabbed in the back. And we had to drag her along our, our white tiles in the kitchen. And it just looked like she had a period. <laughs> so, <laughs> she was like, this is terrible. This is so brilliant at the same time. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah so, and so like, you wanted to be a, an actor first was it the, you, that was that was what you went to acting school or yeah uh, so I, I went to rather than after Bally Furman um, I didn't plan that now and I just thought I'd try it out just to see how far I got yeah and I think that's probably why I got in because I was so relaxed I didn't I didn't expect to get in <laughs> yeah wow rather amazing yeah yeah it's cool mm. um well, you know, I think I want to be a director first and then because I didn't have enough actors in Wicklow, 
I had to act in it myself. Yeah. And then I quite enjoyed that. And so I, I enjoyed doing it all kind of thing. Yeah, fun. Okay. And I'd say I see that you particularly this well start off uh, yeah, watching uh, films that your brother would get from the video store. So a lot of action stuff. Yeah, watch loads of Arnie. Love Arnie. Yeah. He's amazing. <laughs> uh, so I watched like Conan and the Barbarian and Terminator loads of times. Like I, I watch him on repeat, you know. And loads of Spielberg. I love Spielberg. Spielberg's a genius. Like I don't care what anyone says, he's amazing. Mm. And um yeah, so uh, Indiana Jones over and over again, this type of thing. Mm. Brilliant though, like, you know, really good to watch those films over and over again as well. Like proper kind of entertainment, like it's not, it's not self-indulgent anyway, you know? Yeah. It'll, it'll keep you hooked. Yeah, it's right? Always, yeah, like it's always aware of the audience, so. Yeah, 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 great. Yeah, great movies, entertainment. Yeah, great. Yeah, movies. definitely. Yeah, not trying to be arty in any way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love arty films as well, I do. But I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good start, isn't it, to start with stuff that's just about kind of structure and kind of reaching out to the audience, making sure you have them hooked and stuff. Then after, you know, once you learn all that stuff, then you can go towards the arty stuff. You, you know the rules that you're breaking anyway, kind of thing. Right. And even with, with us, like the uh, script for a spa weekend, would, would, you, would you think of those kind of rules that you're meant to have that you have to have a hook in the first I don't know what it is 10 minutes or something yeah or, yeah yeah I suppose it would like um uh yeah kind of start in the action I suppose like I I, I notice I, I often start with people running or something like in the middle of of the action and I start with Spy Weekend with that as well so and then in, I, I did a 1916 short as well I started on someone kind of walking really, really fast you know it's called Proclaim kind of thing and, I, and then on Girls, I, I, another show I, I, I started in the thick of her being in trouble with her teacher and she had to leave the room really quickly. So, yeah, I think movement, kind of being in the centre of the action of something that's just happened immediately is kind of actually one of those hooks, which yeah. I never really realised until I went, like, someone said it to me and I was like, oh, yeah, actually, I suppose that is kind of structured. Those types of things you just learn as you go along. Um, yeah, that's amazing, like, because that does get, yeah hooked in and my criticism of a lot of Irish films is that there'll be a lot of moody very slow shots of, of yeah. uh, I don't know a kitchen wall or something uh, or <laughs> <laughs> no, no. come on what's what's happening here you know so yeah I I love all the uh, references to Fair City it's amazing so. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to get into lots of trouble about that, but it's actually just fine. So I was like, I'm worried I was going to get sued or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's funny. You probably won't get a part in fair. Not, not, you, not you. No, and I'd love a part. Jesus, <laughs> get paid every week would be brilliant, you know. Yeah, but no, no yeah. security, security. Huh? It's Sorry? security, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it's well written as well. I mean, it's a, it's a yeah. great soap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you you um, you have a good few shorts there. Now I haven't had time to look at. I've only seen bits of them because uh, you know because I've only, yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so what was your first short? Then? Um, my very first short after college was called Mist. So it was like a, a, a kind of a ladette dramedy. It's basically it was. Um, it was back in, it was ages ago, it was back in 2007. I, uh, I basically, I broke up with a guy who, and the way he broke up with me was he broke up with me in a pub. And he said to me that basically I was too much of a lad. Like, you know, I was going out and getting pissed the whole time making a show of him. Like, <laughs> like, I think it was just my way. Like, I was totally heartbroken, but I think it was my way of dealing with it. I thought, that's kind of funny, like, you know, because usually up until that point, we only ever saw kind of, more or less kind of women giving out to the guys, you know, you're always getting drunk, leave me alone, blah, blah, whatever. Yeah. And I was like, well, I'm the one, I'm the one getting dumb because I'm, I'm the drunk, like, you know, so um, I thought that was funny. So I, so I shot that and um, that got to Galway actually, which was quite nice uh, and, and did the rounds. We, we sold it to RT and stuff, mm. but it's really cheap. Like it's really, really crap camera and stuff like the DOP was great but I mean the camera itself just looks really cheap and video-ish you know yeah and, and was that again no funding you just went and did it yeah 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 no funding just went and did it 
Class. Um, and did you get uh, funding for your next short then? No, no, I haven't been. I've only recently been funded uh, for a five minute short. It actually ended up being nine minutes. <laughs> but uh, no, I, so I, but after that, I did um, a kind of social realist drama called Girls. And it was based on a thing I'd seen when I was a teenager, for 12 actually. And I saw all these girls uh, beat up these two kind of school girls from like a posh school. Uh, really viciously and then this older man kind of middle-aged man comes along tries to protect them and you think for a second that he's going to protect them because he's a man you know mm. and all these 12 year old 13 year old girls bait the shine out of him yeah. that, that's not funny but it did actually happen and so um i made a short about that uh, and that got to cork and stuff but that that was unfunded as well um and then after that i did uh proclaim 1916 short yeah uh, i've seen a little bit of that yeah yeah and uh, like that's really inspiring you know they just go it go and do it and yeah i don't know i just like i i can't wait i find funding stuff i find even filling in application forms like it gives me nausea like you know i just feel you just feel ill doing it. i hate it i hate that paperwork yeah Explaining all your ideas because an awful lot of your ideas like you'll be real prepped going to a shoot but often as well like when you go to shoot it you'll get different ideas and you're like oh this is great or some actor you know does something and you and you have to change stuff up and you don't want to be saying that on an application form to a county council because that's just going to give them the huge jeebies you know so yeah yeah it's also uh i'd say particularly with a comedy very hard to get what your vision and what you know it's going to be funny because you're but it's very hard to get that across sometimes do you not think or yeah it can be like because it's a uh, tone and stuff you know so um yeah yeah it's it's uh, and it's hard to get them to trust you when they don't really know you and stuff so uh yeah it's a, it's a tricky thing comedy. yeah and, but, but this is your first, this, the other films weren't comedies. This is the first time you've done a comedy, yeah? Well, Mist, Mist was funny. It was about this girl getting, you know, so, so that, that, that was kind of funny. It was sad as well, she's getting broken up, but it was kind of funny. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, girls are serious. Proclaim has little bits of funniness in it. Um, and then I did a, a short I didn't write. I just directed it called Pespish. And it's comedy uh, set in an audition room. And it's all these actors just talking nonsense to each other. Uh, it's written by Shane Canellan, and he acts in it as well. He's brilliant. And then I, I, I directed another comedy called Motherhood. Um, well, I've only seen the trailer for that, but I see the... Uh, Chris, um, Christiana Mahoney. Christiana Mahoney, yeah. She's brilliant. When she used to do stand-up for a while, uh, I haven't seen That's her. That's right, yeah. yeah. She did, I've seen. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's brilliant in it. And uh, so it's her script. And so I, I directed that. Um, so that's, that's another comedy about a woman who's 35 and she's being put under pressure by her friends to have kids. She's at her birthday party and she doesn't want to talk about that type of stuff. And she goes bananas, basically. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. so that's it. Uh, and had you uh, acted in comedies uh, on stage? Or, I mean, you seem to have done a lot of very serious <laughs> acting, actually, from stage acting. Then. Yeah, yeah, I have actually. I've done, uh, I suppose, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I, I love comedy. I started off with comedy, I suppose. I did a, a profit share show called The Truth Game um, mm. in Andrew Lane Theatre mm. years back when, when that was open. And I did that a good few times there. And I played this character that just wouldn't stop talking. And she was the funny character in the play, you know? Mm. <laughs> uh, so there was no pressure or anything. But uh, no, I really enjoyed it. And then, uh, Yes, yeah, so I suppose I, I went to Rad, but before that I did like Wuthering Heights and I played Kathy. But I would try to find the funniness in it. Like I would try to play Kathy. She's kind of funny. Kathy's ridiculous, kind of she's emotionally honest kind of character, you know. Like I know she's in love with Heathcliff, but she's really, really selfish as well, which is really it's quite funny, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um but she's quite demanding and stuff. So I, I would look for comedy in these really, really serious parts as well. Yeah. And um, there's loads of comedy in June on the Patreon. I played Mary as well. There's loads of loads oh. of comedy in there. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I reread uh, Wuthering Heights because I did Wuthering Heights for my leaving next year. And then I read it a few years ago and I went, I was like, come on, like, just 
get it together, will you? What's wrong with you people? <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it was really weird. Emotionally incontinent, you know. What's that? You're just like emotionally incontinent. Yeah. But like when I was a teenager doing it for the leaving, I was so into it. You know, I, I loved that drama. As an yeah. adult, I read it, I was like, oh, come on. You know, I had a totally yeah. attitude. <laughs> giving attitude to the whole thing uh, but yeah but so I was just because you're like you are a serious a actor that that I was wondering is it difficult how do you pitch a comedy acting that uh, yeah how do you know when you're you how do you pull it back and go no that's too much over the top or do you find that difficult or yeah I suppose it's just like um I mean it kind of comes in rehearsal you have to rehearse it to mm. find the tone and the rhythm of it and that type of thing um mm. and it's it, it's i mean i, I suppose it's like acting in, in many ways like straight acting is, is in like you have to be relaxed enough to play but also there has to be uh you still have to get it right so there has to be that tension so it's always a a, a play back and forth between the boundaries mm. of of the tension where you have to you have to make this work but then you also have to be relaxed at the same time and play you know, um, okay. and I suppose, uh, how do you know? You just rehearse on the day as well. And often I gauge it with the crew. They start giggling. Like I remember when we were doing Spa again, we were in the woods and me and Stoney have that argument where he's like, why, why did you take me here? No, oh, yeah. Or no, why did you lie to me? Yeah. I was like, because to make you come. And he's like, but you shouldn't have lied to me because I wouldn't have come. I was like, I know that's why I liked you. And this goes back and forth for ages. So when we were doing that, and, and we'd rehearsed it a lot, and I kept saying, it's just about rhythm. If we get the rhythm, it'd be fine. And we'd only rehearsed it just me and Stephen. And then we got in front of the camera guys. They couldn't stop laughing. So they kept laughing. And yeah. that's that's when you think, okay, I think it's working. And yeah. You just hope to God. Um, it's such a great, that's a brilliant scene. Yeah, that's hilarious. Um, there's lots of that just really good. I mean, most of it is just this really good dialogue, really good. Um, you just, you're enjoying this conversation, you know, it's really good. Yeah, they're just two knuckleheads, like, you know, taking themselves too seriously, like, and that's always funny. Stupid people trying to sound smart <laughs> or like one up on each other kind of thing. Uh, yeah, but they're really lovely people. Like, I mean, well, you know, when she's with her, I don't know why she's hanging out with those three girls, but uh, they're, they're so different to her. But I mean, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you're on her side completely there, you know? And... Yeah. Well, I suppose there are people that she kind of has grown out of since she's been in England and stuff. And uh, yeah, I suppose like I've, I've, I've had friends like that where, you know, like it's all kind of, you have to straighten your hair with, an, you know, the iron and you have to, proper makeup and stuff and all that type of thing <laughs> so it's a bit of a bit of a piss take of those types of people you know uh, yeah yeah I well, should probably went to school school with them or something yeah yeah definitely yeah 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 um but yeah, it's an amazing film so what's going to happen to it now uh, has it been released it uh no so we just done um the film festivals and uh we've won a few awards what we won the Best International at Polish International Film Festival there just recently. But I actually, because I'm doing this now, I haven't had a chance to look at distribution. We had some emails from American guys, but I actually, I haven't even, I haven't even looked at their stuff. <laughs> to be honest with you. I've never done distribution before. So mm. I'm always afraid of signing it away. Um, mm. But I will look into that properly after, after the festival is done and everything. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of the festival, so you, you've organized this uh, Dublin, international comedy festival like amazing that uh, amazing that there uh, hasn't been one maybe before i don't know but uh, uh yeah. idea. it's great that you're doing it and so so when did you have that idea when did you think about this well i've, I've had it for quite some time um i suppose because i've made a lot of comedies and i find sometimes the irish film festival circuit it's it quite closed uh kind of a thing and they often uh they don't let kind of comedies in for stars and when they are in they don't necessarily take them as serious sometimes you know like they wouldn't be up for awards they'd be kind of pushed aside and stuff and mm. to find kind of remarkable because those think comedies are harder to make than 
dramas and um, mm, mm. but uh so yeah i was talking about it for a while and then i just thought oh, screw it i'll just do it myself <laughs> and i uh, did it in the middle of covid but actually it ends up being good timing because the fact it goes online means you can get way more kind of audience and generate more interest in a weird way because it's because it's online so yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, and how long, wh when did you start uh, organizing this? So. Um, so I think I started back in June or July. Yeah. I think. Oh, okay. That's not, that's pretty good. You've, got, you've done well then. Yeah. So you have common, you have uh, films coming in from other, lots of different countries. Yeah. Yeah. We get Korea and Canada, Australia, New Zealand, yeah. UK. Yeah. Class. That's amazing. And, uh, and there's a couple of thanks you you accepted a couple of uh, sketches that I'm in. Oh yeah, yeah, they're brilliant. They're hilarious. Soundgarden oh. is his brain. Oh yeah, yeah. And they're only shot on an iPhone as well, which is mad. Oh okay. Yeah, it was <laughs> cool. I mean, iPhones are great. Like the camera on the mouth, you know, just as good as that. Yeah, I didn't realize you could get different lenses and put them on them and stuff. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, well, uh, listen, uh, I uh, always, normally I'm actually interviewing um, comedians, you know, uh, most of the time, sure. anyway. And I always ask them uh, if they'd recommend a, uh, another comedian. Obviously, I don't know, if you'd recommend someone who's uh, doing perhaps film comedy or, or, or stand-up or writing good comedy. Uh, I know that I sprung this on you just uh, before we started talking, so. Oh, you're grand. Yes, those are what you'd like to recommend. Yeah, I love uh, Natasha Wall. So she directs a lot of comedy. Uh, she has done a lot of serious stuff, but she, she loves comedy as well. And she's directed uh, Mother, short film Mother, that's going to be on in DICFF. So, okay. um, yeah, she'll be making more comedy anyway. And she's right. she's one to look out for, I would say. Uh, Natasha Wall, yeah. Uh, Wall, uh, W-A-U-G-H. A oh, Walk. Uh, I'll uh, I'll get her on. I hope if she accepts. Yeah, do no. She'd love to come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, just to wrap up, then you, the film festival is on third um, and fourth of December. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and going live at nine a.m. on Thursday. So on Thursday, you go on the website, which is what is the website? Oh yeah, uh, sorry, Dublin International Comedy Film Fest dot com. Right, uh, and uh, you can purchase a ticket there, I guess. And uh, yeah, uh, all tickets are five euro for everything. So um, you buy that, and then we'll give you the passwords to all the films, and we'll give you Zoom links to all the Q and As and stand up comedians. We're having lots of stand up comedians as well, as well as yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'll be. Thank you. you. Oh, well, listen, Miss Marie, I, I really nice chatting to you and. So yeah, great to work with you and that you've you've brought a couple of sketches in there as well. And uh, <laughs> thanks for that. It's been really nice talking to you. Thanks. Yeah, it's lovely chanting. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. No. <laughs> bye. <laughs> um I will, I'll, I'll I'll edit that anyway. But um thanks a million though. Seriously. Uh, uh no, no, no. really looking forward to and love the film. Like the film's brilliant, like. Oh, great. Well, thank you. Funny. Uh, it's a fair play to you for doing it, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, oh. Hopefully I'll knock uh, into you at some point. And Jim Roach is involved, yeah? Jim Roach? Oh, Jim Roach. I love Jim. Yeah. Yeah, I did uh, The Importance of Being Earnest with him years ago. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he's great. He's very dry. He's very funny. <laughs> like, right. He, just, he doesn't take he doesn't take anything seriously. He's brilliant. That's yeah. quite open. Yeah. yeah. He played a, a part, like I did Killing a Scully for a few years, and he was, oh, yeah. he was kind of my, um, so like there was another village with three main char characters who were a mirror image of the three in Killing a Scully. So he was ah. the, uh, he was the, <laughs> my opposite. character's version in a different village. So we were. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Gladly. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I have to check that out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. Nice one. Cool. I'll, I'll talk to you again. All right. Bye. All bye. right. Thanks a million. Talk soon. Yeah. Bye. 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 bye.